good morning today we start our session with newton's third law all of you will be familiar with newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction we know that when we apply any force on a body then the body will apply a reactive force to us by the statement we know that the action and reaction are equal in magnitude but in opposite direction when we considering the examples of newton's third law there is some motion associated with it although the forces are equal and opposite in nature but there is some movement because of these two forces acting on different bodies okay now these situations analyzing from a different angle from a different point of view first thing is force is necessarily the result of interaction between two systems it is the first significance of newton's third law isn't it force is necessarily the result of interaction between two systems and another significance we can state the third law as the third law states that forces always appear in pairs that are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction
our statement is here stated in a different way. If a body B exert a force F A on a body A. Then there must be a force F B acting on body B due to the body A such that F B must be equal to minus F A. That is here here we consider two bodies let it be a and a and b and we say that the body b apply a force f a to the body a then according to third law the body a will act an equal and opposite equal and opposite force FB such that FB is equal to minus F of A. Their magnitude must be equal. Equal and opposite reaction. Then FA acting on A due to B and FB acting on B due to A. So there is never a lone force without a partner because the force always appear in pairs. So there is never a lone force. That is a single force cannot exist. And the importance of third law is it directly leads to a powerful conservation law. The conservation law of momentum. In your plus two classes, as an application of Newton's third law, the law of conservation momentum is discussed and some examples. 
recoil of a gun and rocket propulsion such examples also discussed newton's third law is essential if the second law is to be meaningful without it there would be no way to know whether an acceleration results from a real force or merely an artifact of being in a non inertial system this statement is it is explanation to a statement that we said before that is there is never a lone force without a partner here it is explained that if the acceleration is due to a force then somewhere in the universe there must be an equal and opposite force acting on some other body okay that is if we able to see a single force anywhere then somewhere in the universe there must be an equal and opposite force acting on some other body okay that case we discuss in detail that is if an isolated body accelerates and we cannot find some external object which suffers an equal and opposite force then we are in trouble according to newton's third law the forces must be in pairs here there is here we see only one force or only a single force then we are in trouble as far as we know this has never occurred this newton's third law is not only widely important dynamical tool but it is also an important logical element in the in making sense of the first two laws it is the importance of third law
in the previous slide we mentioned that without newton's third law the second law is meaningless okay so newton's third law making a sense for the first two laws newton second law f is equal to ma holds true only in inertial systems what is inertial systems the systems that are non accelerating non accelerating systems are inertial systems okay then the newton second law holds true only in inertial systems the existence of inertial systems seems almost trivial to us because of we consider earth as a good inertial frame of reference for our everyday observations but actually earth is not an inertial system isn't it we know that earth has a rotational rotational motion and a revolving motion and we know that rotating in the case of rotational systems they are non inertial frames newton's law will not be valid the okay here we consider an example to show there is nothing trivial about the concept of inertial system it is a example astronauts in space using this example we will discuss the inertial system and fictitious forces it is a important one fictitious forces
in this example we discuss only a little bit about such a force fictitious force okay then come to the example aliens infiltrated the inter galactic space police pilfered a space shuttle and are making a getaway what the sentence says have you heard the term aliens aliens okay i will explain to you okay aliens is okay that is we consider that aliens are coming from another planets or from the another stellar objects okay it is an hypothetical example okay we know that to discuss or to do experiment in the earth is in trouble due to the gravitational force and some frictional forces okay so in our first session we have discuss the linear air track experiment or the other way to other way is go to space so here we consider an hypothetical example okay that is by the term aliens that is anya graha jeevika ee sentence il parnittullathu ഏതോ അന്യഗ്രഹ ജീവികൾ ക്ഷീരപഥത്തിലൂടെ നുഴഞ്ഞു കയറി ഒരു സ്പേസ് ഷട്ടില് റാഞ്ചി കൊണ്ടുപോകുന്നു and escape idana situation anya graha jeevigala intergalactic space vannu kaynale thara padam the space between the stars and they stolen a space shuttle and 
de Skype. So we have to find out our space shuttle. For that operation, we use two spaceship. Spaceship A and spaceship B. The two spaceships led by two commanders so for our discussion i take R. Roshni from our class and Sri Hari from our class as the commanders. Spaceship A is led by Commander R. Roshni and Spaceship B is led by Commander Sri Hari. And here, we have to find out the space shuttle. Okay. Then the commanders or the captains of the two ships A and B must find out if the space shuttle is flying freely or if it is accelerating. Okay. Their aim is to find out if the shuttle is flying freely or if it is accelerating. For simplicity, we assume that our spaceship A and B and the shuttle all are moving along a straight line. So the commander of A that is our Roshni measures the distance to the shuttle at a series of time using her super LIDAR capability. What is LIDAR? LIDAR means have you heard about radar radio detection 
and ranging. Similarly, LIDAR is light detection and ranging. Okay. So, the commander Roshni measures the distance to the shuttle at a series of time using LIDAR capabilities. Look at the figure. This is the space shuttle and here it is the spaceship A and it is spaceship B. The commander of A is Roshni and commander of B is Srihari. And the commander of A is measuring the distance to the space shuttle x a of t at a series of times okay She tabulated the position of the space shuttle in different times. Let it be T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, etc. As XA of T1, XA of T2. Okay, the corresponding positions are measured. And using that quantities she calculates the velocity velocity va and acceleration a have you know how she measured the velocity Okay, then V of T1 can be taken as velocity can be written as DC displacement divided by time. If we set the initial time as zero, and initial position as 0, then VA of T1 must be equal to XA of T1 minus 0 divided by T1. Okay. And the velocity at different intervals can be measured and she tabulated all the velocities and all the accelerations. Then she plots some graphs. First is displacement and type.
for measuring the position she set up a coordinate system along the line of motion with her ship as origin and measures the distance to the space shuttle okay she used the coordinate system that is fixed in her spaceship so this is the figures here the position with time is plotted and position with velocity and this is position with acceleration from the first graph what can we observe it is curved one and in the second one it is a straight line and it has a slope so from the second graph we can say that the velocity is linearly increasing with time velocity is increasing with time and in the third sketch it is clear that the acceleration is constant and from the first graph she observed that the position is quadratic with time and velocity is linearly increasing with time and acceleration is constant and she evaluated the acceleration as acceleration a a is equal to 1000 meter per second square she calculate the shuttle is accelerating at the right 1000 meter per second square so we know that according to newton's second law if a body has some acceleration it must acted with some force that must be the product of mass and acceleration or acceleration a must be equal to force divided by mass okay so she concluded that the shuttle's rocket engine must be on and the force on the shuttle 
due to the engine that is f a is equal to a a into m s that is equal to thousand into m s where m s is the mass of the shuttle is it clear roshni calculated that the shuttle is accelerating at the rate of 1000 meter per second square as there is some acceleration there must be a force acted on it so we know that in space for moving we have we must use rocket engines so to accelerate the shuttle the rocket engine must give the force then that must be is equal to fa that is equal to aa into ms we know that a is equal to 1000 then fa is equal to 1000 ms where ms is the mass of the shuttle the commander of b that is shri hari follows the same procedure the commander of b shri hari follows the same procedure but he find a different acceleration he got the acceleration as ab is equal to 950 meter per second square the commander of a obtain the acceleration as 1000 meter per second square it is the acceleration of space shuttle and the commander of b follows the same procedure but he find a different acceleration he obtained it as 950 meter per second square so it is different from the first one okay he concludes that the force on the shuttle is fb that is equal to ab ms that is 950 into ms these two measurements are different this difference is a serious problem because if different observers obtain different values for the force on a system at least one of them must be mistaken okay roshni measured the force on the space shuttle as 1000 ms and shri hari measures it as 
950 ms a difference of 50 okay so there is some mistake fortunately both commanders have studied physics isn't it so with confidence in the laws of mechanics they set to work to resolve this discrepancy okay we know that here they have to verify their measurements are correct it is their responsibility so the commanders shri hari and roshni recalls that newton's laws hold only in inertial system okay newton's laws hold only in inertial system so they have to confirm is their system is inertial how can they decide whether or not their system are inertial anybody can help them how can they decide whether or not their system are inertial how can you check whether a system is inertial or not what is inertial systems inertial systems are non accelerating then we have to check is the system is accelerating or not if the system is not accelerating it must be inertial okay if the system is accelerating it is not inertial so roshni checking her spaceship he confirmed that none of her engines are running and that there are no nearby bodies that could exert a force we know that in space for accelerating a space ship for accelerating a space ship we have to use rocket engines so here she confirm that none of the rocket engines are running and 
and there is no nearby bodies to give any force on her systems. So she concludes that she is in an isolated system and that it should be therefore be inertial. But in physics, we have to get some experimental evidence. Okay. So to confirm that she done an interesting experiment. She carefully releases her peanut butter sandwich and observe that it floats in front of her face without motion. It was the experiment. She carefully releases her peanut butter sandwich and observe it. She observed that it floats in front of her face without any motion. It floats in front of her as such she placed okay then according to newton's first law we know that everybody continues a state of rest or uniform motion along a straight line unless it compelled by an unbalanced external force okay so as she studied the physics and laws of mechanics she confirmed that according to newton's First law, the peanut butter sandwich continue in its rest. So there is no force acting on her spaceship. So, her coordinate system is fixed on her spaceship. So, she confirmed that she is in inertial frame. So, Roshni's measurement of the force on the shuttle must be correct because she has measured it in an inertial system. So her measurement of the force of the shuttle is correct. Then what error with Sri Hari? Let us check.
let us check what error come with the measurement made by Sri Hari. To answer this question, we look at the relation between x of a and x of b. The position measured by Roshni and Sri Hari. Okay, for that, from the figure, we know that x a is the position measured by commander a and x b is the position measured by commander b and capital x is the position of b relative to a then the from the figure we can write x of a t is equal to x a of t is equal to x b of t plus capital x of t okay differentiating this position twice with respect to time we will get if you differentiate the position twice with respect to time we will get x a double dot is equal to x p double dot plus x double dot okay x a double dot is equal to x b double dot plus x double dot okay because the system a is inertial newton's second law applied to the shuttle is f true that is equal to ms x a double dot F true is equal to ms x a double dot. Why we write F true? Because we know that Newton's second law is valid 
in an inertial frame. Then we know that the measurement made by Roshni is correct. Then it is the actual force. Then it is the true force F true is equal to ms into x a double dot. Where F true is the true force on the shuttle. Then the force observed by B. The commander B is measured. It is not true. Because there is some error with measurement or there is some difference between the measurement of A. So we write it is apparent force. The measured by B, FB apparent that is equal to MS into X B double dot. So from the previous expression that is we have obtained x a double dot is equal to x b double dot plus capital X double dot then from this one x b double dot can be written as x a double dot minus x double dot here we substitute this quantity in the place of x b double dot so for in the position of x b double dot we substitute x a double dot minus x double dot and the product ms into x a double dot is equal to f true so we write f b apparent that is equal to ms x a double dot minus ms x double dot that is equal to f true minus ms into x double dot okay So, we can measure the true force only if x double dot is equal to zero. Okay. If this quantity is equal to zero, F true must be equal to F B apparent. Okay. If this quantity ms x double dot vanishes, then f true must be equal to f b apparent. So he can measure the true force only if x double dot is equal to zero. Okay, and x double dot equal to zero only if b moves uniformly with respect to a we know that a is an inertial frame then if b moves uniformly with respect to uniformly with respect to a then x double dot must be equal to zero or the frame B must be an inertial frame. Then the measurement must be true. So, to 
check the correctness sri hari also conducted the floating sandwich test we know that if the sandwich is just floating there the acceleration must be equal to zero okay if it is in motion the acceleration is non zero so what will be the result of sri hari's experiment can you guess he find that the sandwich will not stay at rest it is moving sandwich when he place the sandwich at rest in front of him it is just moving okay so he checked the spaceship so it reveals that an assistant engineer has carelessly left a rocket engine running in the spaceship b an assistant engineer has switched on one of its rocket engine so what will be the acceleration of that rocket engine it is the difference of 1950 his system is not inertial but it is accelerating with respect to a at 50 meter per second square so his system is not inertial because it is accelerating when he turns off the engine when sri hari turns off the engine finds the same value for the force as the shuttle of roshni's sri hari turn off the engine and repeat the same measurement once more then he got the same result as roshni got that is he got the acceleration of the spaceship sorry the acceleration of space shuttle as 1000 meter per second square and the force as 1000 ms so i stop here today's session we will continue from here in the next session
Thank you.